Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. On November 28, 2023, according to a report by the Daily Mail, a subsidiary of the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, called the Office of Global Access, OGA, has been assisting the U.S. government in the recovery of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, that have crashed around the world since 2003. This operation is referred to as a top-secret mission. According to anonymous insiders from the CIA, the U.S. government has recovered at least nine non-human-made spacecraft globally. Seven of these spacecraft were damaged to varying degrees during the crashes, while the other two remained intact. Furthermore, the three anonymous whistleblowers from the CIA revealed even more astonishing information. There are extraterrestrials inside these recovered crafts. So, it's not the case that many people believe UFOs are simply extraterrestrial probes or unmanned drones. There are indeed non-human pilots inside these crafts. According to the classified information they have seen, the U.S. government has possession of at least 10 extraterrestrial bodies, which belong to various different species. These disclosures once again confirm the speculation that the U.S. is secretly recovering UFOs and extraterrestrial beings. The identities of these three whistleblowers have been verified by the Daily Mail. And they are indeed from the Office of Global Access, a department within the CIA. What kind of department is the Office of Global Access? According to documents released by the National Archives and Records Administration, NARA, in December 2016, the Office of Global Access is indeed one of the 56 offices within the CIA. The CIA also published an unclassified organizational chart in October 2015 which listed the OGA as one of the nine offices within the Science and Technology Directorate of the agency. This department has two high-ranking officials and its core mission is to integrate and analyze technology and intelligence gathered globally to provide the federal government with advanced technology. However, when it comes to collecting the most advanced technology, these extraordinary unidentified flying objects are the most suitable. The technology of these aircraft clearly surpasses our understanding. So how does the U.S. government accomplish the final retrieval tasks? According to the anonymous CIA whistleblowers, there is an extremely special system within the CIA's advanced intelligence system that can scan and identify UFOs even when they are in stealth mode. This may explain why sometimes we wonder where these UFOs disappear to while flying. Some speculate that it involves projection, meaning the image we see is fake. Others suggest that the UFOs distort the surrounding space-time, creating a wormhole through which they disappear. However, the answer may be much simpler and more direct, as the whistleblowers suggest. These UFOs simply activate their stealth mode again, which causes them to disappear suddenly from our visual or recorded data. The whistleblowers claim that once these non-human spacecraft crash, specialized military units are dispatched to salvage the wreckage. The Office of Global Access, as a subsidiary of the CIA, also participates in some recovery missions, such as retrieving off-target nuclear weapons or downed satellites. Operations involving extraterrestrial spacecraft recovery are generally carried out by specialized military units. These units include the Navy SEALs under the U.S. Pentagon's Special Operations Command, the Delta Force, and the Emergency Response Team, who work together in these recovery missions. According to the CIA whistleblowers, the recovered aircraft are kept confidential and stored by the CIA. The handling of UFO debris and materials is treated like an investment portfolio. Radioactive materials are sent to the national laboratories under the Department of Energy, while non-radioactive materials and intact spacecraft are usually handed over to private aerospace contractors for analysis. This allows them to bypass strict government scrutiny and maintain secrecy under the guise of protecting trade secrets. Among the contractors on this list is the well-known Lockheed Martin, also known as the Skunk Works which is a major defense contractor and the world's largest defense company in terms of revenue. 
They are renowned for developing and manufacturing military aircraft such as the U-2, F-35, and F-117. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Mason Reid revealed in 2021 that Lockheed Martin is one of the private contractors involved in the possession and study of UFO debris and materials. He mentioned that he had been informed over the years that the company has been involved in the research of recovered materials. Reid also added that even during his tenure as the Senate Majority Leader, he was not granted access by the Pentagon to view the recovered wreckage and materials. Therefore, if someone of his position couldn't gain in-depth access, it is even less likely for ordinary citizens like us. With an increasing number of military personnel, intelligence agencies, and government officials providing evidence of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, it has caught the attention of the Congress. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has expressed frustration stating that there seems to be a group of lawmakers willing to go to any lengths to hinder government transparency and prevent the general public from discovering the truth about UFOs and extraterrestrial beings. Last year, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer proposed a bill regarding unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs, after retired Air Force officer David Grush testified before Congress. This bill aims to increase transparency in reporting UFO sightings and has already been passed in the Senate. The bill requires the U.S. government to disclose recovered technologies of unidentified origin and biological evidence of non-human intelligent beings. Various signs seem to support the notion that the U.S. government is secretly recovering and studying these unidentified flying objects, and potentially possesses evidence of non-human beings from distant galaxies. David Grush did not directly disclose further information about the U.S. government's possession of non-human extraterrestrial life during the congressional hearing. Instead, he submitted the evidence he had collected over the years to Congress and the Inspector General of Intelligence. Perhaps due to the evidence and reports being ignored or fearing retaliation from a shadow government, David Grush later claimed on Joe Rogan's podcast that the U.S. government has long established contact with extraterrestrial beings and maintains some form of interaction with them. Mr. Grush stated that during his official duties, he discovered that the government was executing a long-term unidentified flying object retrieval program and a reverse engineering program for these objects. These programs did not start in recent years but have been fully operational for several decades. However, when he expressed his desire to participate in these programs, he was firmly rejected by the authorities. Having worked for 14 years in the U.S. intelligence community as a senior intelligence officer, he had privileged access to a vast amount of classified information that ordinary citizens cannot reach. He knew that people had been accidentally injured in projects attempting to reverse engineer alien spacecraft. And he also knew that higher-level intelligence officials had contact with these non-human extraterrestrial beings. After collecting a significant amount of classified information about UFOs and extraterrestrials, David submitted this evidence to Congress. But he subsequently faced retaliation from government officials. Washington would retaliate and even eliminate individuals who knew too much but were uncooperative. According to David's testimony, he stated that large-scale cover-up operations had been implemented and, unfortunately, were still ongoing at present. Military personnel who attempt to discuss UFOs or extraterrestrial beings face brutal retaliation, which was not surprising during his service. David himself and many of his colleagues had repeatedly experienced planned and aggressive acts of retaliation. This led many insiders to reach an unspoken agreement that, for the sake of their own safety and that of their families, as well as their careers, they would keep their mouths shut and stay away from these murky waters. David told the Congressional Committee, I am fully aware of the planned and aggressive retaliation against myself and other colleagues, which ultimately cannot conceal the truth. 
David swore before Congress and provided evidence that he is 100% certain that the U.S. government not only possesses various unidentified flying objects, but has also obtained various non-human extraterrestrial biological specimens. These beings have undergone extensive research, while the extraterrestrial spacecraft recovered from various parts of the world have proven to be highly useful. Through reverse engineering, the U.S. government has deeply studied alien technology and achieved rapid advancements in U.S. technology through imitation and other means. These significant advancements have been extensively applied in the military domain. So, the primary focus of the reports from David Grush and others is whether the United States has obtained alien spacecraft, even captured extraterrestrial beings and whether they have conducted reverse engineering on these advanced technologies. Apart from the unprecedented admission by the Pentagon in 2019 acknowledging the reality of UFOs, the Department of Defense has always been secretive regarding the remaining evidence. It's not surprising. As Harry Mason Reid, former majority leader of the United States House of Representatives, stated that Lockheed Martin, responsible for top-level weapons development such as the F-35, had participated in UFO material retrieval projects. However, even someone in his position had no further knowledge of the details, and despite being a congressional leader, the Pentagon refused his request to access the information. So, do people believe in the reports from David Grush and other insiders within the CIA? What do you think about whether the U.S. government actually possesses UFOs and extraterrestrial beings? What is the probability that we are living in a Truman Show-like world? Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the next episode.